Nein. For the record, all board members are present. Can I have approval of the May 21st meeting, gentlemen? Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. May 21st minutes approved. Bill payment, voucher number 2018093 to I'm sorry, two until <laughs> two zero one eight one zero four five. A total amount of ninety eight thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and eighty three cents. Have a motion, please. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second on bill payment. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, the department heads, Paul Siegman. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul is in school for a couple days. So, and water and sewer, Rich Donner. Good evening. Hi, Just like to remind everybody that my summer help and staff are out cleaning grinder tanks. We had a couple calls from people uh, that noticed the guys were out there. I said, well, they have green shirts and town of Wheatfield trucks and everything. Well, yeah. I said, well, they're doing a yearly maintenance on them. So people do pay attention and do call about it. So uh, just let everybody know they are out doing the cleaning. They are out doing the hydrants and valves, uh, maintaining them. So if you see somebody in the front yard playing with a fire hydrant, if they don't have a town of Wheatfield truck, please let us know. Um, also, I have three push mowers and four weed whackers that I would like declared as surplus equipment so we can put them out on Auctions International to get rid of them. And, and did you check with other departments to see if they can use them, Rich? Yes. Okay, and no one has any use Nobody for said they needed them, so. Okay, do we have that in our motion package? If not, I'll put it to a motion that... Uh, Rich no, we need, it. we need a motion for that. It's not in the past. I'll second your motion. We'll put it to a motion anyway. Okay. What's that? We're going to put it to a motion. Uh, to declare it surplus property so it can be put right. out on auction generation. Okay. Yeah, the motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. Rich. That's all I have for hey, tonight. Rich, I, got a, I was at the sewer board meeting uh, last week, and one of the issues came up about supposed flushables and how they're, and one of the people brought up a photograph of like 750 pounds of supposed flushable wipes that are not. Uh, being detailed, what, what can we do with that? I mean, I, supposedly there's going to be some type of mailing through the county. Yeah, we've already sent a mailing out to everybody in town once, and uh, I don't know, some people might have heard it or whatever that uh, WYRK put a little bit of thing on there and uh, and called me up about it. But I, I kind of started the ball rolling with this and got a hold of the county because I said I'm, I can't be the only one having this issue. Yeah. And uh, when I got a hold of it, and in fact, Tom from the uh, sewer plant, <coughs> he got the letter in with his water bill, and his wife says, well, I've been dumping grease down, the bacon grease down the sink all the time. He said, you've been what? He said, so, you know, there's an instance where people need to be educated on this. Yeah. Grease doesn't belong in the sewers. Absolutely. The flushable wipes that they're saying, them wipes bind with the grease, and it, it's been causing havoc across the United States, actually. The photograph they had at the meeting was probably double the size of 255-gallon barrels, actually, of wipes, and how they do not break down, and they're jamming your, your grinder. We were having issues with them jamming the grinder pumps. The pump station pumps themselves are getting jammed with them. Uh, if you, Besides if you, that, they're clogging in the, in the sewer if they get caught on stuff. In there. But, I mean, if there's something, I know the county's looking into a county-wide mailing, yeah. um, and if that doesn't happen in a timely manner, maybe we should do something at least locally in, in our water bills to... Uh, sure. We did it once already, and we, we can put it back out again. What's that? What, was that recently, Rich? Uh, within the past two, three years. Yeah. Maybe we should think about doing it again. If, I know the county's talking about it, and if they're going to do it, that's fine, but... Uh, Right now we're on the second mailing of the uh, emergency management oh, okay. letters, so All I've right. got this this month and next month to go with those, and then they'll be out, okay. and then we can do another mailing after okay. that. Yeah, so. I, w I was I, I couldn't believe the, the problem that it creates. So. People don't realize it no. until you show them. I didn't. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. Anything else? That's all I okay. got. Okay, thanks, Rick. Mike Rinaldi, Recreation. Good evening. Just a couple of things. First, I want to thank Carol Mara. She's a resident lives on Deborah Lane. Um, she 
took the time out and painted a merry-go-round uh, playground equipment for us over at Mario Park. Um, it looks fantastic. Turned out really good. She's very pleased. Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments from staff, neighbors. So I just wanted to thank Carol for that. I also want to thank the Garden Club. They took care of flower beds here at the Town Hall Complex, Community Center, Youth Center, and over at Fairmount Park. Everything's looking fantastic with them. So I just want to thank the Garden Club. And then the last thing I have, next Saturday, June 16th, is our annual fishing derby. Starts at 8.30. We'll have check-in. At 8.15, we'll have coffee and light snacks for everybody that participates. That's it, Mike? That's all I got. Yeah, I just want to, and I mentioned it to you this morning, but I've had uh, s several compliments on the condition of our baseball field. So I just oh, want to you. pass that on to you. Uh, nice job. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It's very noticeable that the geese are in trouble. In the yeah, we had one mother goose <laughs> set up shop at the concession stand, and she hung out a lot longer than we thought. People thought she was a decoy because her head would just kind of watch you. She was pretty nasty, too. <laughs> and uh, she held the fort down, and, but she, she abandoned it. She's out. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Bridget sent me a text that she twisted her knee tonight, and she will not be here. And I didn't do it, Mike. Arlene Manti, seniors. Now they're walking the park. Um, is that a sponsoring of anything? Or? No, but is it for American Cancer Society or something like that, or just just a walk? Huh? Okay, great. And that's going to take place at the Town of Niagara Park? Thank you, Arlene. Anything else? Okay, thank you, Arlene. I know I did on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> My clock. <laughs> you tell I did it on purpose? I Mike? thought you did. It's nice to see you here tonight. Good evening. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, I know. Uh, in your mailboxes, you guys should have received... Um, our reports start June 1st. Uh, Don, you had asked me something earlier today, too, about the number of starts or, or we are. Right. If you look at today, it doesn't really give a, a, a gauge as far as how many houses we have going. Last month we show one new application as far as mm -hmm. residential start. Um, up to today, or up to May 1st, was there was 10 houses in the ground for this year. There are four applications sitting on my desk, plus the one we take. So, 15 houses to point this point. And the last couple of years, we've been averaging about the upper 20s, 30. And I've talked to some of the local builders, and the numbers we're looking at, we're probably going to exceed that based on today's applications. And a lot of different <laughs> companies coming through um, as far as singles, you know, the off-site stuff. And so that all can be calculated in, too. So we see a lot of uh, <laughs> potential growth or, or increases in the single families. And then the only other thing on there tonight is I get a motion in front of you guys for uh, Lou Anastasi mm -hmm. uh, to move him from, pardon me, from part-time to uh, full-time status. Which we have discussed in the past, and it's part of our motion process. So we'll, uh, that's going to be coming up shortly. Thank you. Thank you. We talked uh, last year and in the early part of this year about revising, and I know the water sewer updated some of their, you know, cap and fees, and you, know, you were going right. to revise those. Are we getting close to... We have some numbers. Uh, we've been checking also with some of the other towns, and I, I do have all of those numbers in front of us. We want to be careful, I think, as far as where we go with certain costs because we are on par with a lot of the other towns when it comes to the actual building permit itself. What I'd like to do is to look at some of the fees that we aren't collecting when it comes to the fire inspections. Uh, picking those up is an additional fee. Maybe not taking some of those numbers and increasing the base numbers, mm -hmm. but adding some of those for self services that we're giving away for right now. Okay. Now, Mike, I know you've been busy and I've been busy lately, but I think sooner or later you and I have to get together and, and go to some of this. Too. 
Uh, yes, we do. We should. Okay. So sometime in the next few weeks. Sounds huh? oh, good. Before I go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Right. Anything else? That's it, Mike? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Wendell Engineers, Tim Zuber. Way less entertaining tonight. We have nothing on our agenda. So unless there's... Who <laughs> 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 Unless there's any questions. It my heart to find out the engineers have to save enough money to... <laughs> How's the GIS working? I, you, you tell me. Can you get onto it? <laughs> Can I'm anybody not, get I back mean, onto it? It seems like things have <coughs> repaired themselves and it's functioning. Are all the departments seeing GIS working functionally? Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a choice with the way that data is being accessed now. Those those three categories, the state wetlands, the federal wetlands, and the FEMA, are now reading directly from those respective servers. So we won't ever have to update those again. If they change something on the wetlands tomorrow, it'll it'll update right on our server. So. By the way, Tim, while you're there, and something that came up earlier tonight, we discussed uh, a coordinated review. Aubrey, anyway. And uh, we have received nothing back yet on it, but we're going to request that from the DEC and a couple of the agencies, the health department, right. that they do respond so they do have something rather than just make it back to that. That, that 30 day review period is technically over on, like, I believe, like the 15th of yeah. June. So there's still a couple of days left, but we are going to be giving them a reminder but call saying. But if you do uh, contact those agencies, they have to have some response, whether it's a negative right. response. Correct. Correct. Cause typically, with, with Seeker, no response means that they don't have any issues, which is why that's usually what happens. But, but that is why we're particular writing these three agencies to request something. Of that project, uh, some response would be welcome. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Motions. Master Brooks. Okay, first motion uh, from the town board. Whereas the regularly scheduled town board meetings for the town of Wheatfield are scheduled for only once a month for the months of June, July, and August 2018, to which June 4th, 2018, July 2nd, 2018, and August 6th, 2018, and as such, said meeting schedule may present difficulties in making timely payment of certain monthly reoccurring bills that the town is required and wishes to pay in a timely fashion, including payroll, utilities, taxes, insurance, fuel, borrowing payments, etc. And whereas due to the town board meeting schedule as previously presented, there is a desired requirement to make said reoccurring payments timely. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town clerk, treasurer, and our budget director is authorized to process payments for all reoccurring bills as they become due with subsequent town board review at the first meeting following said payments. So moved. I'll second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next motion from the town supervisor to authorize Don McSwan as supervisor of the town of Wheatfield to enter into an agreement with Kurtz Lawn Service, Inc. of 5240 Lockport Road, Lockport, New York, <laughs> to remove a pile of mixed fill from the northwest corner of Fairmount. Well, it says court, it should be park. Sorry about that. In exchange for um, Kurtz Lawn Service, restoring the park property thereunder to a park like setting with grading, hydro seating, and tree landscaping. This restoration of Fairmount Park will be of no cost to the town, and said contractor will be allowed to take possession of the removed mixed fill for which the town has no need as a surplus. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. Uh, next motion from the town attorney. Motion to authorize the town attorney to begin drafting corrections to the town personnel manual to correct the conflict as to when new non-union employees are eligible to receive health insurance. Be it resolved, the town attorney is hereby directed to draft language to correct the town personnel manual with health insurance to be eligible to new non-union employees as follows. Choose one, A, coverage becoming effective the first of the month following the month when health insurance enrollment occurs, or B, 
the first day of the month following their 60th day of employment with the town in health insurance enrollment. Second. I think uh, we are looking for the board to direct uh, which A or B? A or B to, because the, the error in the personnel manual is both are included. So um, the discrepancy is there's two options. We really need to focus in on one. I know there was some interest from the supervisor indicating one of option A coming the first of the month following. I don't know if everyone else is in agreement with that. I think it makes sense. We have, I, am, I mean, obviously this is clerical work to get people enrolled. Is there enough time and uh, lead time for whatever work we have to do? Uh, I, I think there's there's enough time to do it either way. In fact, um, I think originally, and maybe Kathy can correct me, but um, it was the first of the month following the month when health insurance enrollment occurs, but then it, due to, I think, um, when previous editions of the personnel manual came out and the uh, Affordable Care Act came out, it talked about 90 days is the period to enroll, so I think B was added um, to sort of make it, income, to make it work with that, but um, we, I think we can do it either way. There's not a problem doing it, it's just we have to clarify because the personnel manual puts both in there. I, I think it's Okay. I have a motion. So make a motion. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next motion uh, came to me from the Recreation Department to authorize the Town of Wheatfield Recreation Department to be allowed to permit B Moved Fitness LLC, part of Synergy Nutrition of Niagara Falls Boulevard, Wheatfield. <laughs> To conduct fitness classes in the town of Weefield's Fairmount Park. Said classes are to be permitted by the Recreation Department, assuming all park rules are followed, and the fitness classes are to be scheduled in the park at times and at such locations so as not to interfere with other park activities. Additionally, in order for the Recreation Department to permit said fitness classes to occur, BMOVE Fitness LLC must provide a current general liability insurance policy to the town, naming the town as an additional insured for these fitness class activities to be occurring in Fairmount Park. It should also be noted that permission for fitness classes to occur can be revoked at any time should any park rules fail to be followed or be moved fitness LLC does not provide a current insurance policy for the activities that names the town as an additional insured. So moved. Second. Second. Moved. Second. Now, w will they be charging? I know Mike would uh, maybe charging for these fitness classes or are they free? Because this motion doesn't say whether or not they're. Um, I, it was my understanding that they, they would be charging. Um, uh, they have, a, I guess, a facility on the boulevard. Um, I guess a common thing in nowadays, and I don't do it, but exercising is to do it outside in a park, and that's what they want to do. So, um, I, other than maybe, ma I should join, maybe. maybe I should join, maybe I'll be there. Are you going to designate sections of the park where they can be, or are they going to just kind of free form and go where they want to go? Okay. I, I think my can handle it. Maybe get involved. <laughs> so they're just going to bring their class rather than be in a hot in a hot gym. Bring their mats, like do it out in the grass, out of Fairmont, and it's really not going to cost us anything. Yeah. And it's a nice wheat field. Yeah, thing. I mean, a wheat field. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think I made the motion. Yes, yeah. second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, next motion from building inspection that Mike mentioned to approve an increase of hours from part-time to full-time for Lou Anastasi, Deputy Building Inspector, Stormwater Manager, effective July 2nd, 2018. So moved. Okay. Motion in a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And that is all the motions I have tonight. Wow. I just want to mention the reason I, I talk about uh, Matt and his exercising. He makes a heck of a chicken wing. I, mean, uh, I want to get his recipe, but he eats a ton of them.
I need to start working now. <laughs> Board members, Larry Hellwood. Uh, we, I guess we got an email and a contact us off our website. Uh, a resident wanted to know if files would come in the wheat field, and we checked in the past. I'll, I'll check with them again. Uh, but it's a, it's a population and uh, distance thing, and uh, the cost of building out that new infrastructure. Um, and I've talked to them several times over the last several years, and it'd be good to have some competition for Time Warner. It'd be good to have competition. Maybe the rates would go down. Competition always, you know, stirs a little bit lower prices. But last I talked to them, you know, it's, it's on their agenda to come to Wheatfield, but they don't have the funding or the money to do that yet. Uh, but I, I will ask and see if there's anything there. You know. You know, you've not heard anything, have you guys, on file? And then the last thing I want to report is our census 2020 LUCA process uh, is, is going well. Um, John D. and myself are locating all the address discrepancies, and we have Agnes uh, putting them in for us. And uh, I, what? Oh, Doris. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doris. <laughs> uh, and we're probably going to have, I, I know, several hundred uh, new address points. I mean, it's, there, there's a lot of discrepancies in some of the past years. Plus, we have new construction to put in there. And it uh, seems like we're doing it early in 2018 because the census, they're not doing it in 2020. But this is our last chance to get address points in. A after July 13th or 14th, we have to turn all that back over to the federal government. So we, we have about five weeks left in our process, and uh, we've just about identified everything we need to identify. We'll be meeting tomorrow to you know, try to wrap up the rest of the uh, plan to finish out the year, for the month. <laughs> but it, 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 it's looking good. And then but April of 2020 is when they actually send their packets out. And we want to make sure that everybody participates in that because the tax dollars fund town government. <laughs> and without you know, population, and it's the bigger our population is, the more tax dollars we receive. So we want to make sure that we get every head county. That's all I have. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have an update on the bike races that were proposed for Indicon. Um, so after hearing some concerns from businesses, uh, at the public hearing we had back in April, we went back to the drawing board um, as opposed to doing it on the weekdays. We looked at doing it on the weekend. Um, after working with the businesses and working uh, with the IDA uh, over there, uh, unfortunately we were not able to come up with a solution that we felt satisfied the needs of the event and also all the businesses in the park. And really the biggest impediment there was Securing an off-street area where the spectators and the bike racers that are waiting for their race would be able to go, that was off the street. So without having that, which we really considered a cornerstone of being able to do the event, we had some real safety concerns. So, so now we're not pursuing it any further. Um, you know, part of the reason why we liked the idea of the event so much was because it would be a, an event that we feel residents could come with their families and watch. So I think moving forward, we're going to be looking for other other things that uh, could possibly achieve that. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not going to be like that. Uh, and then the other thing I just wanted to mention, the air show is this weekend. Uh, I, actually, I just heard an article, uh, read an article, and I heard it on the radio. They were talking about it. It's billed as uh, the biggest air show in North America. Uh, so it's definitely a big event, and there's probably going to be some extra traffic uh, in the area, probably Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so we need to look out for that. That's it. Thank you, Kurt. Yep. Uh, Randy Reswa. I have nothing. Okay, thank you, Randy. Uh, I've just got a couple things tonight. Uh, one of the things I had talked with Mike this morning, and I had a, a, a call uh, asking why the town of Weefield Fairmont Park does not allow dogs. And uh, so we discussed it at our department head meeting this morning, and um, uh, the lady I talked with was on Hoover Road, and she takes her dogs to the Cambria Park because they do allow dogs. So what I'd like to do is make a motion tonight uh, that we... Um, and Mike, is it in your park rules? 
Okay, so then we can make a, a change in the town rule to allow dogs at Fairmont Park, provided they are leashed and that the people that own the dogs clean up after the dogs. And Mike, I would guess that uh, we should also probably put a, a signage indicating maybe two locations to uh, say, you know, dogs must be on a leash and please clean up after your dogs. Now I know Town of Cambria actually has stations set up um, where they have bags available, doggy bags that you can pick up as you walk into the park. Um, if, you, if it seems to become a problem, Mike, in the future, let us know and we'll maybe go a little bit further with it. But at least this way, people can take their dogs. They have the walking path now on their leash and walk their dogs. And I, I think it only makes sense. Everybody else does. And she said she goes to Oppenheim Park, but there's always people driving around. She's always afraid that her dog's going to go left or right and get hit. So uh, I think it's a good thing for the town residents. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Does that need to be for all parks or just Fairmont? I mean, we own no, the one over. I can't think of the name. Mario? I know it's a lot more science for you to make it. It's just, just fair amount. all the parts? We do. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? Let's put it to motion that the dogs are allowed in all the town parks. Something to the fact that they're on a leash and they clean up after the dogs. And I would say the other parks are quite small. Um, and But at least Fairmont Park, which is a larger facility, maybe put the signs there to start with. Okay? And we'll take it from there. Is that okay? Sure. okay. And could we just confirm? I, I know we have insurance, but could we just confirm that there's no implication? Yeah, I will check with you tomorrow. I, I don't believe there is. I know all the other towns have a lot of dogs. Uh, and again, it's the responsibility of the police post that the dogs are on leases and they're cleaned up afterwards. And you know, Mike, if it becomes a problem where you see they're not picking up their dogs, let us know. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've got a motion. I'll, I'll, I'll check second. Motion. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I think it's nice for the town residents because you hear they're taking their dogs to other parks outside of the town, and why not use our park? Uh, one of the things I, I wanted to announce, and, and fellas, I don't get the emails today, but on June 27th at 6 o'clock, the Power Authority is going to put a presentation on for all of the towns in Niagara County here. And I hope we have enough room. But they are. Uh, offering to uh, all the municipalities in Niagara County to uh, help convert into LED lighting at a big cost savings, and they will provide the engineering, uh, total analysis. It's a, it'll be a nice presentation if anybody's interested. Come on in. I'm sure it'll be a crowd because I've already talked to all the supervisors from the other towns, and they're going to try and bring all of their to town board members. And I hope you fellows can make it also because I think it's important. Uh, and in the long run, if, if you, what we're looking at is actually a purchase of the lights instead of uh, just the bulb itself. And in the long run, um, uh, we'll save a lot of money. And I, I think if you're looking for further explanations, you can call me uh, or attend the seminar, and I think you have a good idea of uh, <coughs> what a benefit will be for town residents. That's all I have. Uh, the 27th at 6 o'clock here at the town hall. And you know I, I'm going to I'm going to get a RSVP from the town, but if it looks like it's going to be too many coming, we'll try and move it to the meeting. Okay, that's all I have. Next meeting is July 2nd at 7 o'clock. Public input. Anybody that would like to discuss anything we've discussed tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. Um, I just want to let people know that the USDA um, will be in the town of Wheatfield. They're actually go going to be placing about 6,000 traps throughout Niagara County. Um, there is a new, it's a European cherry fruit fly that is invading some of the trees in Niagara County and across the country. So they wanted people to be aware that they will be um, placing traps and doing a study on these um, fruit flies. Um, everybody will have on orange vests that say USDA. The traps are about nine inches long. They're yellow and they'll be placed in trees. They will be contacting homeowners randomly. They're actually, they go through and map out a town and will take certain locations for residents and town facilities. 
So information is going to be up on um, the table in front of the office or in my office with all the details on it. But in case you see anybody, you know, walking around and putting the scraps up or you get something in the mail, the USDA is, is out and they're going to be out between now and September 30th. Do you have to have cherries? Trees, or is that just no, the name of the? That's <laughs> the name of the, and they do it. They do um, go after fruit trees, but they can also land in later eggs on other types of trees. And we know what happened with all the ash trees that were mm -hmm. killed. Terrible. So they're afraid that this is going to go down the same path. But these fruit flies actually um, destroy the fruit and the fruit will fall off. So all the crops throughout Niagara County, which Niagara County is, yeah, has a lot. So they're, they're doing the study now. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor, signal.